<laughs> Hello again, and welcome to Man's Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. with them. I know that the producer just said, big smile. Big smile. <laughs> and he oh. laughed. So, oh, I mean, so I'm sorry. I haven't checked I, my hair. Today is I'm a disaster. I'm not even going to touch my hair because I have been procrastinating because I'm letting it grow so that I can get it cut. And that's next week, thank God. So... All right, I'm trying I'm, to suck it up and deal I'm with it. I'm too hot, guys. Yeah. That's happening. It's a, My really eyeball like, exploded before the show, yeah, so that's happening. Apparently we have eyeball issues in our team here. Um, but you know what? We're here. Yeah. And uh, Yay. we got it was good 60 news yesterday again. Oh, and my rained. oh my god! Did you hear the rain? It sounded like, like some, last night was it sounded pretty like crazy. Somebody threw a bucket of water at my kitchen window. I was like, "What the heck is that?" Yeah, I love that. My my old dog is old, old. so she's deaf, which is great because she used to be yep. scared of things everything. like rain and everything. The little dog is not deaf. But she loves mud and puddles. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to have to pull my carpets out. It's been yeah. a... Yeah, well, that's okay. It'll give you good reason to put new flooring in. Yes. I mean, we're currently doing it in the basement. Right. So now it'll just and I keep, I keep threatening. I was like, I'm going to invite Tammy over because she will just, like, math this <laughs> for us. You know, we, yeah. we everything's ready. We've pulled it up. We just got to do the work. So I told <sighs> Louie this morning maybe we'll just do all... George Carlin's material, like put it on and just, just you know, lay going. the floor. That's right. And see how that goes. Yeah. So um so let's see. We're March eighth. Is that what today is? Uh, I yes. Don't know. It's town is it town it's meeting town day? Town meeting day, I think. I'm very So confused. if you're watching on Facebook, yeah. I know get out. I know and you need go to do go your out and civic vote for duty. Sean, somebody or other in Bedford for school board. There's a lot of very interesting school board races going on because you've got the people who want parents to have the right to dictate the schools you know crazy thought i know and oh you mean those... the customer who's paying for the service right. might want to be like um, forced to pay for yeah. the service so might the, have the opinion. teachers unions are have come out in force it'll be interesting and i get very confused about town meeting days and stuff because we the don't city live in a doesn't town. have it um, yeah. from what i understand i think today is when um towns i don't know if they go and vote like I know an SB2 town does deliberation back here, and they deliberate what's going to be on the ballot like today. I always thought it was on Saturday. Is that why I'm saying? I think think the people who are voting today might be SB2 towns because they had their deliberative sessions like a couple weeks ago. I see. Something like that. So there's all all sorts of elections around the state today. Um, Next Tuesday, the 15th, is a special election here in Manchester. Ward 9. Ward 9. Victoria, Victoria Sullivan. Sullivan and um I don't remember the other guy's name. It starts with a last name starts with a B. It's Burkish. I'll have oh. to think of a city employee because Just I think at one point all Go the V are, for victory. Uh, go but with- what's interesting is that the Burkish team and the Democrats keep um trying to t- it, it this is the the typical Democrat playbook these days. But everything is, you know, racist and homophobic and transphobic and all these things and they keep trying to tag any Republican, they're doing it in the towns too, that anything you do and say is partisan politics and it's dirty politics and it's all these things when what they're doing is actually what they are trying to convince people that we're doing. So Victoria, like for example, um, you know, we talk about Barbara Shaw a lot because Barbara Shaw was a good friend. I mean, she was, you know, I her birthday would have been yesterday. She would have been 80. I think it was yesterday or Sunday. And I thought about it and I'm like, you know, she was one of the few, she was definitely a Democrat that I didn't always agree with. Shocking. Um, but she also, we did agree. She was for school choice. She was for all sorts of parents, you know, rights. She uh, she actually took her constituents first. She actually looked at, like, is this good for my people? She didn't always tow her party's line, which is probably why they primaried her a few years back for alderman with Burkish. Oh, wow. But, like, so now he thinks that, she, he, he he's trying to say we're playing dirty politics. Well, no, we're just telling you that Barbara was a good person. Uh, let me tell you guys something. All politics is dirty. Well, that's it's just a bunch of people lying. Um, <laughs> so there was an interesting article that bubbled up in my feed um, yesterday. So this was from the 6th. So today's the 8th. So this was out on Sunday. Michael Graham on uh New Hampshire Journal Inside Sources. Did you hear also that New Hampshire Journal, uh, several Democrats refused to talk to them anymore? And I was well, like, that's the way are we that's now the refusing game? Yes. to uh, talk to they're new only sources? Gonna talk. Well, they're only going to talk. So we are literally creating Pravda yes. and whatever they're, the alternative the de- Many was. Democrats have decided, and I, you know, and I always try to t- remind people on our side of the aisle, 
not to do this because it defeats the purpose of the journalism. Um, if you refuse to only talk to, if you will only talk to journalists who 100% agree with you, are you really talking to a journalist, right? Well, that, but also... What's wrong with information? Why are they so fearful that there might be communication? Well, because to some extent, I don't think we are at a stage globally where there's true reporting happening. No, no one's really going, here are the facts, kind of figure it out for yourself. It seems like everything is agenda driven and it's just different factions kind of massaging their messages. But I was actually surprised. I saw a thing yesterday on Twitter and I forget, I think it was CNN, but don't hold me mm. to it. It was one of the more lefty ones. It wasn't Fox, right? But this reporter was saying that they are no longer going to report well, from Russia because they cannot guarantee the safety of their journalists. So um, in, so under war reporting, right, you used to have war yeah. reporters who would literally just go. And I'm thinking of people like Hemingway, yeah. Martha Gellhorn, yeah. the people who did the Spanish Wars. Like, it was a very traditional thing that journalists would sort of go and they would, you know, tell and they things. they kind of got a free safety pass, kind of, sort of. Well, yeah, I mean, no, because I think it was, like, super dangerous right. and you had to be some kind of crazy <laughs> to go do it, right? But for news channels to all say, well, we aren't going to report at all from here because it puts our journalists in danger. I'm like, but that's what journalism that's, but is. that's what journalism is. That's what free speech is. Yeah. I mean, there's journalism a deep is assumption not, of risk. Not sharing an article on social media that someone else wrote. And I also heard, I thought this was what you were going to say. I don't remember where it was. Um, a lot of these online articles now there's a lot of the left are going to no longer have bylines to say who actually wrote them. yes so we've actually Why is been that? so so actually and and that was part of the thing too so that they said so that the journalists can't get uh personally identified right but i'm like no it's because they actually have prada-esque yeah. studios with people who are just churning out propaganda yep. at this stage I don't know about you, and, and I know I don't want no, to segue fine, us too fine, far from this, but I mean, I have no idea what's happening in, in the Ukraine not and really. Russia because... Something's um, happening, but I'm not sure. And half of the footage that well, we see, I'm not even sure if it's real. Well, half the footage is not real, right? right? It's from previous wars and stuff. I mean, even when, when Twitter is trending news has to tell you, here's how you can identify stuff. But then I saw a... It may have been on Saturday, a thing from the AP, right, mm -hmm. which said, um, so basically what it boiled down to is the fact checkers aren't checking the facts, but you can't fact check the fact checkers. Right. And it's just like, where are we? Like, this well, is and just Dan weird say, and circular. And we used to do this. We had gotten away from needing, feeling the need to do this. Um our go-to no news source now, especially with the Ukraine situation, is actually English Al Jazeera mm. because they don't have a dog in the fight. This isn't about the you know the Al Jazeera countries. So they're actually we used to get a lot of news from Russia today because they had a different perspective. They were just telling news, you know, right. that didn't relate to Russia. So well, it's and and that actually is a very good rule of thumb is to 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 Ask look at who, who, who is right who 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 doesn't have a role with propaganda yep. and then kind of go to them for yep. it yeah i think um, that's that's um, kind of on the well not propaganda but on the silliness side i mean the, it, people who died from covid not silly i mean, i will help you segue into that okay. so given how much over the past 2 years the government of the world, but here in particular in America, lied to people about COVID, about the COVID narrative, about what would be a solution to the problem, what would be early interventions. So if you, over the past two years, did not learn to be highly skeptical of the spoon feeding of your news, then uh, I don't know what to tell you. But, um, you know, don't, you can't believe anything they no. tell you at this so stage. In this New Hampshire Journal article by Michael Graham, um, who the Democrats will not speak to, he was talking about um, the two sides of the story at the State House. So the, the New Hampshire House is returning to Reps Hall this week 
Thursday for session. Now, having served in Reps Hall, I will tell you, it is tight quarters. You are <laughs> sitting, you know, really close Hi to your guys. neighbor. <laughs> that being said, you can get up and walk away from your seat. And um, and we are segmented. They do. They don't always do it, but this particular year, all it, it's segmented. They start from one side, so they fill up the seats with Republicans, and then they fill up seats with Democrats. So the Democrats are basically on, and it's always almost always been this way. Okay. Um, so one side is Democrats, one side is Republicans? Pretty much. And then somewhere, okay. obviously, in the middle, there's Republicans and Democrats sitting next to each other. The horrors, I know. So now, the state house, because there's lawsuits against, like, the speaker and the majority office and things like that, because they want to return to some sort of normal actions up there, um, they took to, the, took to putting in these plexiglass barriers between some seats. Which... Don't ask Scientifically me. makes it worse yes, because, in order to spread because this if Carla virus. And I had like <laughs> if there was a barrier here and I had COVID and there's a barrier here, this person here is more likely to get my breathy COVID stuff than if it was open. So and can I just also say for the greenies, I think we said this almost two years ago. I'm like, you know, I always say who benefits from something. Q yeah. bono, right? That's how you figure out what's really going on. Follow the money. Right. And um, I'm like, look at all this money that's being made out of plastics, yep, which yep. is what? It's like, right, not the green mm. stuff. So there's a picture in there, which is, I mean, you can use your imagination. There's seat here and seat here, and there's a little plexiglass thing. It looks like it would be about this high, right? Now, keep in mind that the Reps Hall has before COVID had an air filtration system. And then prior to COVID, they had installed an air conditioning system that didn't used to be there when I was serving. So there's another thing. And then they've added all these air exchangers and all this purification. They've done all the things, right, that they could possibly do to move the air and keep it fresh. And it's got really high ceilings. You're not in a tight little room. You might be close to a person next to you. Now, no one has ever said Oh, well, I shouldn't say no one. I would highly doubt that anybody's saying to the Democrats, you can't wear a mask. Oh, So no, if you're still concerned that there's a way, you know, you can follow the not truth in so not scientific thing and put a mask on your face, even though science is, you know, in the CDC and who and everybody have said it really doesn't protect you. But if it makes you feel better, by all means do it. If you want to put an N95 mask on, by all means do it. What is boggling to my mind is that the same people who are causing this false need for things because they're afraid to go back to the state house and all this stuff just this past week and so and, so but and also to be clear the plexiglass is not going to be between me oh and, no we were going to come and oh you're right, coming no, to, that. to that okay so i want to show you a picture so this is a full house democratic fundraiser where amy um amy klobuchar spoke it was for Martha Fuller Clark's 80th birthday out at the Sheridan Portsmouth Harborside Hotel. You might not be able to see really well. I don't see a single mask on a single face in that very full room where just this weekend, Democrats gathered to have a fundraiser, right? Yet, back at the State House, those dividers are not just going up between every third seat. You know, maybe there'd be some rhyme or reason between, I don't know where you The, the same rhyme or reason as wearing a mask to sit down at a restaurant exactly. and then you can eat and then you have to put it on to go to the, the loo. The barriers are Germs being are. placed because the Democrats want this between seats where a Democrat sits on one side and the Republican sits on the other. Because that, apparently science says if you are a registered Republican... You will tran you will give COVID to the Democrat because that's how COVID works. It looks oh, it at only your party. goes one way. Yes, uh, only because only apparently Republicans can give it to Democrats that's because that's certainly a narrative we've right. heard for two so years. So this is the absurdity of the the people who are lying to you about all sorts. Do you of know things. what drives me even more nuts? This is the absurdity of the people who claim that they can rule you. Yes, These they, are the they people you guys are voting for. Yes. They're morons. <laughs> Stop doing well, I mean, it. It, it. You look at some of the stuff and you go, you can't make this up. You cannot make this they up. They are making it up. But they literally do make it up. <laughs> now, I feel really bad because um, 
who was the minority leader, Rennie Cushing, Cushing, who I served with, he was a nice, really nice guy and everything. Um, there were probably there were probably were some pieces of legislation that I probably did support. I worked his. with him on death penalty yeah. stuff. Right, I mean, he was anti death penalty. I voted for I voted um, to get rid of the death penalty. I have no qualms about that. But um, he passed away yesterday. He had a long term um, battle with I think it was pancreatic cancer. You know, like that's terrible. And he stepped away last week. Um, not that I'm begrudging the next person, but he um, appointed in his absence, David Cody out of Nashua to be the new minority leader. David Cody hasn't been to a session since COVID began. Like what? none of them. Wow. Because he doesn't feel like he can. I so wonder like, if okay. that's, but is that gamesmanship with these lawsuits? So that, because I know part of the argument with some of the lawsuits about opening the state back up or the state house back up was, but we have all these sick people. And I'm like, but if they were sick before COVID, COVID. And, and it, wouldn't you have the same risk in terms right. of you could go to the state house if you have a severe kind right. of cancer and someone right. could have some kind of cooties right. or they traveled somewhere or they came they back with chicken some pox, kind of you know, something. Some... So, so that seems like a very artificial right. We thing. only now are concerned about kept getting sick. sick. We if, were never if, if we have in... uh, compromised immune systems, and I think, and everyone who watches this show, I encourage you, start to wonder where... Do all the immune compromised people come from? Why are there so many people now whose immune systems don't work right? A lot of it's probably diet and, and chemicals. I think it's diet, it's chemicals, it's environmental. Yep. It may be, you know, we, we know that the vaccine schedules mm -hmm. that the CDC recommends went from about 12 in 86 to 72 doses. Uh, for children, there are several things in these products that we don't actually know what they are. And we, there are things in these products that we know what they are, and we know that they're not good to put in your in your body. Body, I don't know. Heavy metals, apparently, yeah. not great for the brains. Nope. I would even say heavy metal music, yep. not <laughs> great for the brain. <laughs> um, so when I read that article, I went, I was commenting on Facebook because I was sharing it because I was like, people just need to like think, think about, look at the. Look how silly this is. And it made me think about like, um, what is this? This uh, this definitely is not science. And then I, so then I Googled because I like to make sure that before I say something, I'm actually using the appropriate word. Um, constantly, the Democrats are calling Republicans bigots. But if you look at the actual definition of bigotry, it is an obstinate or unreasonable attachment to a belief, opinion, or faction, in particular, prejudiced against a person or people on the basis of their membership of a particular group. What the Democrats are wanting in the New Hampshire House, in Reps Hall, is in what the, the way they act is exactly what bigotry is. Oh my God, so the, it's not the, the, the Greta state progress against oh, free awful. staters. I'm like, you are textbook. <laughs> Bigot. Bigot. Um, on the absurdity, this is just little. So we were at, both of us were um, on Sunday, we were lucky enough to see Frank Edelblue give a very mm. good speech about the state of education in New Hampshire. And I'll tell you, you know, people who are anti-choice, as far as I'm concerned, are anti-child. They are not, I want the best, I pay for education of children that I don't have. I want my money to be providing the absolute best education possible for each individual child. There is no one size fit all education solution. Um, school choice for me means more children get more choices. I think teachers get more choices. I think we'll have happier people teaching. We'll have happy, you know, people working in the education field will be happier. Um, but he, uh, Commissioner Edelblue had some interesting things because, you know, what we hear it all the time. If they just give us some more money, we could, you know, education will improve. Now, Manchester has abysmal test scores. We barely teach kids to read and write, um, let alone math or science. Um, but if we just give them, you know, maybe 10 million more this year it, so that they can hire a communications director or, or give out raises to teachers, that will somehow miraculously make the children learn. So he had said a couple things and I was like, huh, I gotta write those down while he's saying it. So in New Hampshire, we have a testing system that was developed basically by educators. Like in New Hampshire, that's how we do it. We say to the teachers and the people in the education field, how do you want to test? And they say we want to, in New Hampshire, I guess we use the SAT. Um, for like our competency at the 11th grade. Um, but that was up to the educators. They were the ones who said, let's use that. They they teach to the test. They 
they they score the tests. They are the ones responsible. In New Hampshire, they have a, we have a scoring one through four, four being the best, one being the lowest bracket. Forty two thousand students in New Hampshire score in the lowest competency level on reading, and they score even lower in math and science. And how much money? So then I go back to like, oh my God, maybe people didn't live here when the Claremont decisions, because the reason it was then was these poor districts that didn't have the property. So like a place like Rye could afford good schools because the people are more affluent and whatever. And then Claremont claimed, well, but we're not on a fair playing ground. We need more money from somebody else and so on and so forth. But the other note that he said, which I was like, see, it's not the money. That after adjusting for inflation, so it's not their then money versus now money. It is money to money. Um, also, all, just to interrupt, ask yourself why adjusted for inflation is a thing. Every time you see something in an article or in a newspaper or when someone's mentioning it and they're like, well, this was $1 million in 80s dollars right. now and now it's $1.8 million or whatever the thing anymore. is, um. then <laughs> ask yourself because that is a tax on you yep. and it's a tax on the poor and it's the reason everyone is getting poorer. It's Go Google what happened in 1971. So adjusting for inflation. Adjusting for inflation. All but one New Hampshire school district currently is spending more now than the richest district was spending at the time of the Claremont decision. And so Claremont so if it was, was in the true, mid 90s, right? Um, I think so. Or maybe early 2000s. It was in the last oh, okay. 20 years. Um, but the, the irony is, so you said it was money. But now you are spending that much money, and the kids are still... Not still! It. It's getting worse! Right. So this is the type of things that the, the media and the Democrats, instead of looking at issues and actually trying to tackle issues, because that's to me what School Choice did. They said, look, Johnny over here isn't doing well. How can we make sure Johnny gets a good education? Instead of just saying, well, you have to force Johnny to go in that building from seven in the morning till two in the afternoon because those are the only hours that kids can learn. And they must go there based on where they live, not based on what they need. I mean, that those old school thoughts no longer work. I mean, that was also kind of the point that I think Commissioner Edel Blue was making with the 42,000. Now, don't quote me on this, but I seem to recall that we have about 120,000 students in that the school be. system. That sounds about right. Um, maybe it's 150, but let's say it's in that range, right? So 42,000, let's say it's That's about a third. a third, right? His point was a lot of times they'll gloss over it or they'll say 25 or 30 percent are failing or whatever but when you think about it on an individualized yeah. level right 42,000 children kids you see in the grocery store or walking on the sidewalk or yep, kicking a ball in the, in the park, park or, whatever. or whatever cannot read they're functionally illiterate we are creating a society and the reason we have this problem and why i'm harping on this is because those are individuals and the problem we have is we've created a system that is so big that everyone just looks at the collective yep. we have a homeless problem we have a school yep. problem we have a whatever but the point is, every single one of those is a person, yep. which is why when we say one size doesn't fit all, that's literally what we and, mean. You can't write a program. We're not widgets. What's particularly <laughs> onerous in this sense of w w with school choice. So in New Hampshire, we have two things right now. Well, we have lots of things, but we have um, business tax credit. We have education tax credits. So people who pay business taxes or um, interest and dividends taxes to the state can choose to have 85% of those taxes deferred and go to the scholarship fund for low income kids to get scholarships to go, to go to a school that better fits them. Then we have education savings accounts or education freedom accounts as we call them here in New Hampshire that also allow the parents to take those state funds that I'm paying for and you're paying for, and all of you are paying for, and instead of giving them to the building that's open from seven to two, we're gonna let it follow the student and get them the best education. 
for low, right now, it's only low income students. So I don't understand how the Democrats can, with a straight face, say, we are here to help the poor because the Republicans are all big, rich, white, st cigar smoking people. You know, they're the bigots and they don't care about the little guy. When at exactly the same time, the only people looking out for the little guy are actually the Republicans and the Democrats are fighting tooth and nail to take these educational opportunities away from the poorest kids in the state. It makes you no can't sense make it up. Me. You cannot make this stuff up. Just saying. So what else you got? <laughs> so uh, some progress up at the legislature with regard to some of the COVID insanity yeah. that yeah. we've seen over the past two years. Obviously, there was a a strong push, I think, from states to say, "Hey, federal government, you have like overreached like crazy people, and maybe we're not going to let you do that again." So there are two uh, bills that are coming up. There was a panel that endorsed the dispensing of ivermectin by a standing order. The reason that happened was for some crazy reason, you know, uh, the <laughs> CDC and then our local governments, because in New Hampshire they did actually ban. Yeah, you couldn't get the, ivermectin the prescription from the of so ivermectin. They, so get this. Sorry. Uh, so so panel endorses dispensing ivermectin by standing order. The subtitle says critics of the bill say it amounts to lawmakers practicing medicine without a license. Now before anyone says anything, I would like to ask you what is banning a medicine from yeah. being prescribed, if not lawmakers practicing medicine without a license. But it's worse than that because it wasn't lawmakers. It was unelected bureaucrats yep. going, we're just going to do this crazy stuff and you must I'm all steal comply. I'm going to your paper because I wanted to read a line because I said it out loud at the house before we came here and both Dan and Mary and Cl uh, said no, but that's not true. So they talk about ivermectin and they right away say ivermectin was originally designed to be an anti-parasitic for animals. And both of them went, Here. actually, that is not where Here. ivermectin. Supporters said that the measure would guarantee that granite staters get the drug from health care providers rather than animal feed stores right. or foreign so, countries. Two things. <laughs> ivermectin did not come about to be a horse warmer. No. Or, or heart guard for it's your dog. It's an anti-parasitic. It was, it was used worldwide. It's and then. What a Nobel right? med medical science so, prize. So this is that whole um, hype, you know, where we're going to say horse team warmer. Oh, my God. You want to take horse team warmer? No, I want to take a drug that might be helping diminish the, the, the impacts of COVID. Then the other one that's also pretty good news is another bill blocks enforcement of federal VAX mandates. That's, that's a big deal. So that is a state's rights issue. Uh, there is no conceivable reason why the federal government could have done anything that they did. Um, we should really be leaning into our state's rights and all of that. So, um, <laughs> so this is basically uh, a effort to block any federal COVID vaccine requirements in our state. Now, does that mean someone couldn't require it as a as a uh, condition of employment? I think you probably still could. I would say, why do you actually want to work right. for a company that right. thinks they own your body when right. you're off the clock? Because that is the main concern with right. something like this. You're mandating that someone put something in their body that doesn't go away when they clock out at the end of the day, yep. that was experimental to start with, that we do not know what the long-term effect are going to be but we do know based on a report that came out from Pfizer last week that has nary a mention in the legacy news also nary a mention the truck convoy the US truck convoy mm -hmm. not the Canadian one uh, is in DC now they're on the loop from nose to tail mm -hmm. which means it's something like 62 or 68 miles long Nary, yeah, nary, you don't hear about nary that. a mention anywhere in the legacy news. Because we wouldn't want Americans to know that there were other Americans who agree with them. Right, because, and, and that should also just be a wake-up call to be like, you cannot trust anything coming from the mainstream. You cannot trust anything coming from the federal government. And you really, really, really should just start to trust yourself, yep. trust your instincts, look internally and start to just focus on your life because none of us can control any of this but what you can control is your own health your own mental yep. wellness and all of those things so start there
Okay, then. That's so, all I got. Tuesday, March 15th, next Tuesday, special election. If you live in Ward 9, please get out there and support Victoria Sullivan for Alderman. Uh, you can get more information about her at Victoria for Manchester. That's F O R spelled out, Victoria for Manchester.com. Um, if you live in a town and you happen to be watching this, make sure you get out and participate in your town elections. And um, weather-wise, let's f keep our fingers crossed that the weather keeps up and all those snow banks go away. Because if we don't have snow to snowshoe or cross-country ski, then let's just get rid of it all together. Um, I'm looking <laughs> let's forward get to into spring. mud season. Yeah, let's do mud season and get it out of the way. Uh, that's all we got for this week. We will be back next Tuesday, even though it's election day here in Ward 9, but I'll come in anyways. All right, and have I will one. see you guys tomorrow at the Carla Garrick Show. Thanks. Bye.